I love the comforts of Mount Justina. You know what's amazing about we human beings? We love being comfortable. We love living in the lap of comfort. We love, I mean, we go looking for a, a new chair, recliner chair. I don't say I want the hardest, most uncomfortable, I want the softest, most comfortable chair you got in this whole store. When I sit in this chair, I want it to swallow me whole and I want to be happy about it. Oh yeah. All right, we're going to look at a, a very familiar passage of scripture this morning. And um, I'm going to ask you when I announce the passage, don't turn me off because I promise, you, even though you've heard the scripture, you haven't heard the truth that I'm going to share with you this morning. And um, so I'm going to ask you to turn with me, if you will, to Psalms chapter 23. Psalms chapter 23. And, and sometimes our familiarity breeds contempt. And sometimes our familiarity with what it says causes us to miss what it is saying. So this morning, we're going to not just look at what Psalm 23 says, but we're going to look at what Psalm 23 is saying. Amen. And I trust that it will be a blessing to you. And um, I know that it will. So Psalms chapter 23, and um, we're going to begin with verse number one. Stand with me, if you will, please, and follow along with me silently as I read out loud. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still, the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father, thank you for your word. I pray that you'd open up our eyes, that we might behold your wondrous truth. I pray, Father, that you would make us willing doers of your word, not just happy hearers of your word. And we thank you in advance for the change that will take place in our lives today as a result of your truth taking root in the soil of our mind. I pray that for those that are here today that are going through a trial, that you would help them to see how to make it through that trial through your word today, and we thank you in advance for what you will do in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. You know, it seems like the whole world has gone digital. We got digital cameras, digital phones, digital video cameras, digital voice recorders. I just read from a digital Bible. The whole world's going digi digital. But I want you to understand something. The human mind still thinks in analog. Digital is just, it's a symbol that represents something, some ones and zeros that represent something, but an analog is an image of that thing. And I believe with the 23rd Psalm that what has happened is we have become very familiar with the digital signal of the 23rd Psalm. We know what the words say. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We know how to say it. We get the digital signal, but I believe we've missed the analog picture for far too long. See, we think in pictures. When I say man, you don't picture M-A-N. You just picture a man. As I say tree, you don't picture T-R-E-E. -E, you picture just a tree. I don't believe the psalmist was just writing down some pretty flowery words that we could read at a funeral. I don't believe that he was just writing down a nice child's poem that we could teach our children to memorize. I believe what the psalmist was doing when he wrote the 23rd Psalm is I believe he was painting a word picture. 
And I believe he dipped into his word colors on his word palette and he took out his word paintbrush. And I believe that he painted a picture for us to hang on the corridor of our mind as we walk through this life so we can be reminded of the truth of the 23rd Psalm. As I was reading this passage and meditating on it actually one day, I, was, I got down to verse number three and I said, it said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm sorry, verse four, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. And as I began to meditate on that scripture, as I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, I, I asked myself, what is a valley? I got home, I looked it up in the dictionary, and it says that a valley is a low, narrow passageway between two mountains. And as I began to meditate on that definition, a low, narrow passageway between two mountains, I realized that if there is a valley in the 23rd Psalm, there has to be two mountains in the 23rd Psalm. And I believe the psalmist took his paintbrush and he came over here on this side and he, and he painted a big, beautiful mountain scene with green grass and still waters and paths that lead in the way of righteousness. As he stepped back and looked at it, looked at it and admired the beauty, he came over to this side of the canvas of the scripture and he painted a bigger mountain, greener grass, stiller waters, more paths that lead in the paths of righteousness. And as he began to meditate on that picture, he knew something was missing. And right in the middle of those two great, big, beautiful mountain scenes, he came and he, he, took, he dipped his paintbrush in the darkest, most dismal, ugly colors he could find. And right between those two beautiful mountain scenes, painted a dark, ugly, difficult valley. And as I'm looking at this picture in my mind, I'm asking myself, David, why did you mess up the picture? It was so beautiful with the mountain scene. It was so beautiful with the blue skies and the green grass and the still water. Why did you have to come down here and paint this dark valley? And as I meditated on the scripture, the spirit revealed to me that this passage of scripture is teaching us the lesson that you've got to go through the valley to get to the vision. It says in Psalm 23 verse 1, it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. David took his word paintbrush and he painted a picture of contentment, a place where I've got everything I want, everything I need, everything's going my way. And I'm content as I can be. I'm as happy as a lark. I'm singing my song. I am blessed just to be blessed on this mountain. I like living on this mountain. In fact, I got to be honest, I love living on this mountain where I've got enough money in my pocket and enough food in the refrigerator and enough health in my body and I've got enough rest for my soul. I love living on this mountain. And as we look through the scripture, we see person after person after person after person who lived on this beautiful mountain. What, 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 is, what is the name? of this mountain, this mountain of contentment, this mountain where there's enough. I'd have to call it Mount, Mount Just Enough. Mount Just Enough for me. And I like living on Mount Just Enough. And, and as I'm over here and I, as I walk through the scriptures, I see other people who live on Mount Just Enough. I come across a young man and he's got this beautiful coat. And I say, young man, that is a beautiful coat. What is your name? He said, my name's Joseph. I say, how long have you lived over here on Mount Just Enough? I've been on Mount Just Enough my whole life. I'm my father's favorite son. I've got, I've got 11 brothers and none of them got a coat but me. I love living on Mount Just Enough. Mount Just Enough for me. 
I can think of times in my life where, where just everything seemed like everything I touched turned to gold. Everything, everything always went my way. And, I, you know, you were the one that got the promotion. And you were the one that got the good job. And 200 people filled out an application. But you're the one that got it. And, and, and you, or you started a business. And other people started the business. But it didn't go that well for them. But it went great for you. And, and you were living on Mount Just Enough. Just as happy as you could be. Everywhere you went, you had a spring in your step. Everywhere you went, you had a song in your heart. Why? Because you lived on Mount Just Enough. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, when I was a little kid, I didn't understand that passage. I thought, well, if the Lord's my shepherd, why don't I want him? I didn't, that's what I thought. I didn't understand that it meant the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. I shall not lack. Because I live on Mount Just Enough. But that wasn't all he painted on the mountain. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He didn't just paint contentment on Mount Just Enough. He painted comfort on Mount Just Enough. It's the place where I'm content. It's the place where I'm comfortable. I love the comforts of Mount Just Enough. You know what's amazing about we human beings? We love being comfortable. We love living in the lap of comfort. We love, I mean, we go looking for a, a new chair, recliner chair. I don't say I want the hardest, most uncomfortable. I want the softest, most comfortable chair you got in this whole store. When I sit in this chair, I want it to swallow me whole and I want to be happy about it. I'm looking for something comfortable. We want the most comfortable shoes, the most comfortable clothes, most comfortable car, most comfortable lifestyle. We love to be comfortable. You ask the average Christian, well, how, how, how much money would you like to make? I just want to make enough to be comfortable. Wow. Because we love contentment and we love comfort and we love to live on Mount Just Enough. Mount Just Enough for me. But that's not all. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. What's that a picture of? That's a picture of the fact that he didn't just paint contentment. He didn't just paint comfort, but he also painted confidence. It says, he maketh me to lie down by, in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. Still waters is a picture of peace within, without. He restores my soul. Restored soul is a picture of peace within. I love living on Mount Just Enough. In fact, when you're on Mount Just Enough, you see other people and they're struggling, they're having a hard time, and you look at them and say, I don't know why they don't get it together and just move on over here to Mount Just Enough with me. It's the place of contentment. It's the place of comfort. It's the place of confidence. I always have a song in my heart. I always have a spring in my step. I always, I wake up with a smile on my face on Mount Just Enough. I walk around all day with this big old cheesy grin on my grill on Mount Just Enough. I go to bed with a grin on Mount Just Enough. And I'm walking around over here on Mount Just Enough just doing my thing, you know, just being blessed, just just living my life blessed like I am. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm too blessed to be depressed. I'm too glad to be sad. I'm too anointed to be disappointed. I'm on Mount Just Enough. Mount Just Enough for me. And everything's going just fine. The sun's shining brightly in the sky. The birds are singing wistfully in the trees. And I wake up one morning on Mount Just Enough. And I look across the way, and I see something I've never seen before. Wow. What, has, 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 that, has, has that always been there? I see another mountain. Higher than this mountain. Greener grass. Stiller waters. More paths that lead in the way of righteousness. And God says, speaks to me by his spirit through his word and says, that's what I have for your life. That's what I have for your ministry. That's what I've got for your business. That's what I've got for your family. That's what I've got planned for your life. That mountain. And you look down and the grass that once seemed green now seems brown. 
And God says, I want you to go over there and live on that mountain. And in that moment, I said, well, okay, well, if God wants me to go, I'm going. I start packing up my stuff. I pack up my family, and here we go. And I start coming down off Mount Just Enough. And I get all the way down to the bottom of Mount Just Enough, and I realize at the base of the mountain that where I am is nothing like where I came from. I realize that my new experience is nothing like my old experience. I realize that my life is about to change forever. I was up on Mount Just Enough just kind of laying around, just kind of being calm and being comfortable and being confident and being content. And all of a sudden, I'm down here at the base of the mountain. And it says, yea, though I walk. I was laying down up there, now I got to walk. And I'm walking, and I'm wearing out shoes, and I'm walking, and I'm getting corns on my feet, and I'm walking, and my legs hurt, and my feet hurt, and my ankles hurt, and I'm walking and walking and walking and walking, and I realized that while the mountain was a place of contentment, the valley is a place of difficulty. And I said, well, Lord, couldn't I just take a helicopter? The Lord says, no, 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 no. You've got to go through the valley to get to the vision. And I'm walking through this place of difficulty. Everything I touched turned to gold when I was on Mount Just Enough. Everything I touched turns to mud in the valley. I wonder how long I'm going to be in this valley. I, 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 I don't like it in this valley. It, it ain't comfortable. I had everything I needed up there on the mountain. I don't have nothing I need down here in the valley. And, 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 and what's the name of this valley anyway? It must be the valley of not enough. The valley of not enough for me. And I'm walking through the valley of not enough and and it feels like I've been down here so long. It don't, I even forgot what the mountain looked like I'm going for. I forgot what the vision looked like. I don't even remember what the vision looked like. And I'm walking through this valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow if it's, as if difficulty was not enough. Now we got shadows to deal with. And a shadow happens when an obstacle comes between you and the light. And as if it's not bad enough that this valley is a valley of difficulty, it's also a valley of darkness. And here I am in the valley of not enough difficulty. Darkness, and you know what darkness does. Darkness, darkness brings fear, and, and darkness brings confusion, and darkness brings worry, and darkness brings, 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 brings anxiety. And I start wondering, what am I going to do? And every time I hear something, what was that? What was that? What was that? What, what was that? And I used to be on Mount just enough, and now I'm down in this difficult, dark valley. I want you to notice something now. <laughs> I want you to notice that the valley is where your life changes. The valley is the place where your relationship with the Lord changes. It's easy to pontificate on Mount Just Enough. It's easy to praise the Lord on Mount Just Enough. But I want you to notice when he got in the valley, his pronoun changed. He's up on Mount Just Enough. Well, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He Restore my soul. 
he. But watch what happened when he got down in the valley. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, not for he is with me, but for thou art with me. He didn't say his rod, he said thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. See, the valley is the place where you stop talking about him and start talking to him. And the only way you're going to make it through the valley of difficulty, it ain't enough to be religious. Religion might do you all right on the mountain, but religion won't get you through the valley. It might be enough for you to be talking about praise the Lord on the mountain, but when you get in the valley, you got to be like, help me, Lord. You got to stop talking about him and start talking to him. That's the only way you're going to get through the valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow. Darkness and difficulty, the valley of the shadow of death, as if darkness and difficulty weren't enough. There's got to be death in this valley. The stench of dead flesh and skeletons and, 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 and flies and, 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 and maggots and, and everything that represents death in the valley. And I get down here and the darkness has me confused and the difficulty has me tired and the death has me afraid. Why am I here? Why am I here? Because you've got to go through the valley to get to the vision. I'm so glad. I'm so glad when the psalmist painted this picture, he didn't say, yea, though I go into the valley of the shadow of death. He didn't say, yea, though I go in the valley of the shadow of death. He said, yea, though I go through. He said, I'm going through. And I'm going to tell you something. When you stop talking about him, start talking to him, I'm telling you, you can make it through. Through the valley. I believe you're in a place of difficulty right now, but God is bringing you through the valley, not into the valley. I understand that it's hard. I understand that it's dark. I understand there may be some death in the valley, but God didn't bring you into this valley to leave you in this valley. He brought you into this valley to bring you through this valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Sometimes, for some of you, you've been in the valley for months. For some of you, you've been in the valley for years. There may be a few of you who've been in the valley for decades. And you're wondering, <laughs> Surely this is not all there is to life. Oh, no, that's not, that you're, that you're absolutely right. That's not all there is to life. Because he's bringing you through the valley to get to the vision. And here's what I'm going to tell you. This is something I know for a fact. When you step past that last big tree in the thicket at the base of the vision mountain, you will see something that will shock you out of your mind. There's a table. It's got all your favorite food on it. And it says, reserved for you. It said, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Hey, those lions can roar back there in the valley, but that table's for me. Those bears can growl in the valley. That table's for me. Those wolves can howl in the valley, but that table is my table. And I look at it, and I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed because he knew I was going to make it through when I didn't know I was going to make it through. He knew I was coming when I didn't know I was coming. He knew I was going to make it when I was thinking I was going to die back here in the valley. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemy and he brought me through the valley of not enough the valley of not enough for me and I see that this other mountain is a place that's prepared for me 
The reason he prepares the table at the base of the mountain because he knew how hungry I was. He knew how weak I was. He knew that I was suffering on the brink of starvation and I didn't have enough strength to climb a mountain even though my vision is there. And I sit down and I eat and I renew my strength and I'm ready to start climbing and I step up and start climbing and it says thou anointest my head with oil and I realize in that moment not only is this mountain a place that's prepared for me but it's a place where my purpose is because an anointing was when God revealed your purpose to you when God anointed David to be king, David was a shepherd. He's out there messing with an old stinky sheep, you know, out there messing with an old stinky sheep in the field, making sure they was taken care of. And a bear came, got one of those sheep. He said, oh, no, not one of my fathers. He chased that bear down and slew him. Now, I got to be honest. I love my daddy. But if, I'd, if my dad was a shepherd and a bear would have came and got some of my sheep, I might have gave him a napkin. But I sure wasn't going to get that sheep from that bear. David said, I slew him. And a bear came, took one of my father's sheep. I went and got him too. A bear and a lion. Oh, I, I don't know that I'd do that, but that's what David did. They, they, but Samuel came while David was being faithful at a little thing. And God came and anointed him king over Israel. And I'm going to tell you something. If you can't be faithful over a little, don't look for an anointing over something big. He anointed him. And in the, moment where, in the moment where you're climbing the mountain where your vision is and you get your anointing and God reveals to you the purpose for your life, that's when all jealousy leaves you. That's when all envy leaves you. That's when you realize you don't have to compete with anybody. God's anointed you for what he's anointed you for. And your purpose, nobody else can, f can f fulfill. And you can't fulfill anybody else's purpose. So you don't worry about what other folks are doing. You are just as content to live and breathe and move in your anointing. I'm climbing this mountain. I get up to the mountain, to the top, and oh, it's so good. I thought that, was, that wasn't no mountain, that was a molehill. <laughs> this is a mountain. Yeah. Thou anointest my head with oil. Notice what he said, my cup runneth over. He didn't say it ran over. He didn't say it go run over. He said it runneth over and, and it runneth over in it, and it runneth over in it, and it runneth over in it, and it runneth over. Not only is this mountain a place of preparedness, it's not only a place of purpose, but it's also a place of plentifulness. But I had to go through the valley to get to the vision. I'm going to tell you something, folk. I'm going to tell you something, folk. I know what it's like to be poor. I was so poor I couldn't afford the other O or the other R. That's why we call it poor. I know what it's like to be sick. I... I had polio as an infant. I walked with a brace on my leg my whole life. I know what it's like for folk to make fun of you just because you're different. I know what it's like. I had a leg stretch operation when I was 13 years old where they broke the bone, the tibia of my shin, and they stretched it. I know what it's like to go through stuff. As pastor told you, my oldest son was killed in a car accident three years ago. I know what it's like to lose a child, not just a loved one, a child. I preached my son's funeral because I didn't want somebody else to mess it up. I know I don't stand before you as somebody who's never gone through anything. I stand before you as someone who knows you got to go through the valley to get to the vision. And anybody's going to tell you you can get to the vision without going through a valley, they lying to you. <laughs> and you're over here on this mountain and it comes running over. I like what Old I heard an old preacher say one time, he said, I like to see a, a brother get a blessing. I like to see his cup run over. When brother cup runs over, brother saucer gets a little. Amen. This is the place where God gives you not just enough to be blessed, but he gives you enough to be a blessing. It's a place of plentifulness. If that was Mount Just Enough, and that was the Valley of Not Enough, this must be the mountain of more than enough. More than enough for me. This is a place where I'm blessed, not just to be blessed, but I'm blessed to be a blessing. This is a place where I'm blessed, so if I, got, I don't only have enough money for me and mine, I got enough money to be a blessing to somebody else sometime. Not only where I got enough food for, to feed my family, I got enough food to feed somebody else's family. 
I'm talking about Mount more than enough. Mount more than enough for me. I got enough encouragement to share some. I got enough joy to spread some around. I got enough happiness in my heart to make somebody else smile. I'm not just looking out for number one. I'm looking out for number two and three and four and five. And I'm blessed to be a blessing on Mount more than enough. But I had to come through the valley to get to the vision. Oh, walking around on Mount more than enough. Blessed to be a blessing. Happy as I can be. Song in my heart, spring in my step, joy in my soul. Meditating on the word of God and I hear some footsteps. Turn around, don't see nobody, walk a little farther. Hey man, you following me? Um, well, well, now that you brought it up, yes sir, I'm following you. Who are you and why are you following me? Well, I, my name's Mr. Goodness. And I'm following you because the Lord sent me to follow you. You going to follow me for the rest of the day? <laughs> you don't understand how this works. What, the rest of the week? No, no, it don't work like that. The rest of the year? I'll follow you all the days of your life. I got your back. Well, why are you following me, Mr. Goodman? Well, just in case the enemy tries to attack, I'm here to block for you. My name is Mr. Goodness. And I'm following you over here on Mount more than enough. And I got your back. And now I'm happier than I was before. Why? Mr. Goodness got my back. And that ain't all. I'm walking around a little farther and I hear Mr. Goodness talking to somebody. Mr. Goodness, who is your friend? He said, oh, well, that's my friend, Mr. Mercy. I say, Mr. Mercy, what's your job? Mr. Mercy said, well, you know, in case the enemy gets past Mr. Goodness and happens to knock you down, I'm here to pick you back up on Mount more than enough. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou anointest my head with oil. Thou prepares the table before me. Anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. On Monday, they're following me. Tuesday, they're following me. Wednesday, they're following me. Thursday, they're following me. Go and see the boss. He's on my case. They still follow me. Coworker lying on me. They still follow me. Mama gets sick, they still following me all the days of my life. And I'm on Mount more than enough, blessed to be a blessing. And I'm over here on Mount more than enough, blessed to be a blessing, living my life the way God intended me to live my life. And you know what? I wake up one morning and the sun is shining brighter than it's ever shown before. The birds are singing wistfully in the trees. And I look over there, and I see something I never saw before. Another mountain, bigger than this one. And God says, that's where I want you, right there. That's what I got for you. Just remember, you gotta go through the valley to get to the vision and somehow while I was doing my ministry and doing my business and doing my work and, 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 and spending time with my family over here on Mount More Than Enough, somehow Mount More Than Enough turned into Mount Just Enough and God has given me a bigger vision. The only difference is now when I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I know I got Mr. Goodness and Mr. Mercy got my back. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou anointest my head with, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I got a question for you this morning. If Joseph had to go through the valley to get to the vision, why not you? If David had to go through the valley to get to the vision, why not you? If Abraham... The friend of God had to go through the valley to get to the vision. Why not you? If Ezekiel 
The prophet had to go through the valley to get to the vision, why not you? If Jesus himself had to go through the valley to get to the vision, for he, God, hath made him, Jesus, to be no sin for us. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Or you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, over here on Mount Justin, now, for your sakes he became poor. So that you through his poverty might be rich. Rich with eternal life. By believing on the name of the only begotten Son of God. If Jesus had to go through the valley to get to the vision of saving his people from their sins. Why not you? I trust that as you are walking through this life. And you happen to walk past the picture of the 23rd Psalm as it hangs in the corner of your mind, then it will never again just be some comforting words at a funeral or a nice child's poem. But I trust that it will be a picture that will encourage you as you're going through the valley. But you've got to go through the valley to get to the vision. And life is a series of mountain peaks and valley highs. And another mountain, now you're more than enough. But eventually it turns into just enough. Go back down in the valley, ah, more than enough. And you gotta go through the valley to get to the vision. Let's pray.